Ever since I got out in the street, well, I've sort of been letting the scene roll all over me instead of trying to prove that I belong in the scene. A Saturday morning live action series about a teenager travelling around with some old guy in an RV, that's not at all creepy, where they travel the highways and byways fighting injustice, especially if that injustice is found within an hour of LA. In time of dire need, young Billy has been granted the power by the immortals to summon awesome forces at the utterance of a single word. Shazam! Today you saw why everyone should be given a chance to prove his or her abilities. Don't put someone down just because they're different from you. And don't put a girl down just because she's a girl. Shazam! is a live-action Saturday morning series that originally ran on CBS between 1974 and 76. A half-hour show that followed the adventures of Billy Batson, nominally a teenage reporter who would travel around in an RV with Mentor. Oh, this place hasn't changed a bit since my younger days, Billy. Dinosaurs are going. Oh. <laughs> Billy has been gifted enormous powers by the immortal elders, Solomon, Hercules, Atlas, Zeus, Achilles and Mercury. Cherry picking anyone from mythology or history whose names would make up the name Shazam, which was sure convenient. Billy, in order to like others, we must first like ourselves. When Billy says the magic word, which remember is not please, he becomes the mightiest of beings, Captain Marvel. A guy who can fly, had super strength, is fast, but for legal reasons is totally not Superman. Just as, again for legal reasons, the show about the character Captain Marvel is called Shazam. Maybe it's none of my business, but don't you think you ought to notify the authorities? Shazam! for television is a very small-scale series with a minuscule budget that makes some major changes to Shazam! in order to get this onto the small screen. Apart from Billy and Captain Marvel, it features no other characters from the comics, so there's no Mary or Freddy. There are no comic book villains either. Mentor is an entirely new and not entirely well-defined character. My name is Mentor, this is my friend Billy Batson. But he's not really much of a mentor unless it's a coincidence and his real name was just James Michael Mentor. Of the Philadelphia Mentor, Mentor's sole heir to the Mentor's fortune. I hope that's true, Billy. Mentor's The Fresh Maker. The wizard Shazam from the comics is replaced by the immortal elders. The first letters of their names combined spell Shazam. I mean, it could have been much worse if the elders they chose to use were named Artemis, Styx, Selene, Hera, Oceanus, Leto, and Erebus. Asshole! As it's a 1970s series, a recreational vehicle had to be featured. It was almost a legal obligation. It was either that or dune buggies or skydiving. The RV doesn't have any special features apart from having Captain Marvel's logo on the front, despite the fact nobody is supposed to know of the link between Billy Batson and Captain Marvel. Its other special feature, having all of the equipment needed to keep Billy's massive hair in check, unless he just goes to the same barber as Lieutenant Worf. A typical Shazam episode would go thusly with very few deviations. Mentor and Billy would be travelling around in their RV, often ribbing each other. Did I ever tell you what a fine athlete I was as a young man? Yeah, as a matter of fact you have, Mentor. Several times. Then the immortal elders would call Billy and give him some incredibly cryptic clues about what Billy would soon have to deal with. Though a man escape every danger, he can never wholly escape those who do not want him to exist. Then we see some teenagers getting into a predicament that involved at least one of them in a moral quandary. Okay! Oh yes, this is one of those shows that is all about teaching kids about right and wrong and morals. I don't know. I think we ought to... What's the matter, Pa? You chicken? Then something will go wrong and Captain Marvel will come to the rescue, which early on is usually acting like a winch to lift something heavy. Alternatively, he can use his strength to stop a moving object. Everybody thanks Captain Marvel and announces they have learned a valuable lesson, even when they're being led off by the cops. And tell Billy that I've learned that, that there's more than one way of doing things. Captain Marvel said we'd feel better when we talked about it. I feel better already. Good you feel that way. Well, you boys better get in the car now. And I am finished with drugs, man. They are bad news. And then at the end of the episode, we get the moral of the story like Aesop's fables, but with tights. Hi. Today you saw how Norm finally had the courage to trust Billy, and most important, trust himself. He learned that words like chicken and fink are often words that are used by people who have done something wrong. 
Also, cleaning up after yourself and listening to your parents. When you respect the law, you're respecting yourself. In fact, there's an awful lot about doing what your parents tell you to do. When your mother or father tell you what to do, they're not showing their authority. They're just showing that they love you. Your folks know what's best without exception. If you find that you want to do something that mother or dad say you aren't ready for, listen to them. Helping a kid understand that they don't have to succumb to peer pressure pops up a lot. I suppose that's why so many people just go along with the crowd and don't make waves. As well as not judging a book by its cover. You know, the basics of not being assholes to people that are different. In some ways, all of us are different and others, we're all the same. This is a small potato show. Nobody threatens to take over the world. The real villain here is often kids on the edge of juvenile delinquency. It's very, very parent friendly as it bends over backwards to not be objectionable to the sort of people who hated comic books. As a result, it has a habit of totally patronising its intended audience, talking down to kids as if they were toddlers. Young kids probably lap this up, but anybody older than 12 might have side-eyed the whole endeavour. I'll prove it. Prove it. That said, there's a two-part story that ends the first season that has the most enjoyably comic take on how the kids spoke in the mid-70s. Dig the big hero. Hey, uh, look man, you and me, we ain't got no beef. Let's hope it stays that way. Or at least how a middle-aged writer thought the kids spoke. Well, dig this, he wants to split. If you or your friend spoke like this back in the day, then far out, man, I can dig it. I told you, I'm not going to make Vinny scene. But that doesn't prevent Vinny from bringing his scene to you. Even though at the time there had been nearly two decades since the adventures of Superman, as far as the folks making this show were concerned, it was as if no time had elapsed at all. Remember, there are times that everyone needs help. The FCC, which oversaw things like broadcast television, had rules about children's television that required a certain amount of educational content. If you needed to watch a show like Shazam to learn valuable life lessons, you perhaps already had bigger problems in life. It sounds like vandals. Yes, it's too bad. Everybody pays for this sort of thing, even the vandals. This is a very low budget series, filmed mostly, if not all, on locations that don't seem to stray all that far from Los Angeles. There are lots of hills, rural roads, some semi-desert areas, and outskirts of generally unnamed or made-up towns. Episodes are pretty much always about kids aged between about 10 and 18 who get into all sorts of scrapes. This whole situation could have been avoided if you'd have reported what you saw to the proper authorities when it happened. Which also gives us appearances of famous child actors and actors who would find greater fame in later years. Look, I told you. We're cool! Will you believe me? Also, I will never not be creeped out by child Rorschach in 70s television. Oh, elders, fleet and strong and wise, appear before my seeking eyes. Billy Batson is meant to be a teenager here. He's a little older than he was usually seen in the comics. Just don't tell my network I watched Arrival Channel. Michael Gray seems the most comfortable in his role as the guy trying to figure out how to apply the cryptic messages given to him by the elders and how it applies to some kid who wants to go skydiving. You're only hurting yourself. Or deal with a kid who's not sure about doing this thing with his friends, but gets called chicken. Or a kid who wants to do the right thing, but worries about being considered a fink. You mean you're gonna fink? The elders themselves aren't particularly forthcoming. Friendship is a two-edged sword, Billy. Billy at times tries to elicit more information. It's hard to practice what you preach. Can you explain what you mean? Only to be brushed off by the cartoon immortals. Goodbye, Billy. I do feel we've missed the scenes, maybe cut for time, which revealed that they were trolling him the entire time. Billy, if an overland train leaves Chicago at 3pm bound for Honolulu, at what point do you alert the Coast Guard? I'm not sure if I know what you mean, Elvis. Billy also gets no change of wardrobe. Obviously, if he did, they'd have to reshoot any of the stock effects shots of his transformation or when he's talking to the elders. Neither he or mentor ever seemed to change their clothes, which must have made the interior of that RV a bit ripe in the summer. I'm sure Captain Marvel and your other heroes would agree. Les Tremaine was at one time a popular radio voice. Here he's that guy who drives Billy around, offering advice, though he also seems to be able to eavesdrop on Billy's DMs with the elders. Oh, it'll become clear to you in time, Billy. In time. Hey, that's just what Solomon said. <laughs> Tremaine would appear in small roles here and there. His most visible role would be in the film War of the Worlds, but he'd be a constant presence as a voice in animation for decades. 
And that, my boy, is the way the game of checkers is supposed to be played. You owe me seven million dollars. Six million. Without any special powers of his own, Mentor is usually there to help Billy and the audience understand the plot. His advice is only slightly more useful than whatever wordplay the elders have come up with this week. Billy, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't win the Eurovision Song Contest. I'm not sure I understand what to do. Mentor drives the RV, complains about food and modern music and what to watch on television. So there's no misunderstanding. The loser does the dishes. When Billy transforms into Captain Marvel, we get Jackson Bostwick, in early episodes at least. Hi. Captain Marvel's feats are less marvellous, more, hmm, not bad. The special effects are limited to a few process shots used again and again, some clever camera angles and a few trick props. At the end of the episode, Captain Marvel reiterates the episode's moral, which to anybody older than the age of 12 must have come off as incredibly condescending. Two heads are often better than one. See you next week. As for Marvel himself, Jackson Bostwick in the first season certainly looks the part. The guy is like a giant redwood. Red for the red suit that he totally fills out, and wood for the standard of his acting. He does the limited action scenes well enough, but seems incredibly uncomfortable with dialogue. Hi. You know, someday you may see somebody do something wrong. His delivery during the moral lesson at the end of the episode does look like take 23 of a hostage video. You know, Mentor, if I didn't know you better, I'd say that you have a tear in your eye. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Viewed today, Shazam feels like the absolute perfect parody of low-budget 1970s filmmaking, with its mix of 16mm and 35mm footage. Hi. The heavy-handed moralising, coupled with a special type of acting, the sort you'd often be forced to endure in high school, would, if broadcast today, qualify as a sitcom. Well, she's going to have the shortest track career in history when they find these in her locker. Treated as such, this show is fantastic. It is an absolute hoot. Well, let me just hide this mask and wig and these clothes and I'll head into town and see what the news is. The number of educational consultants over the end credits will attest to the sorts of hoops the program makers had to jump through for that educational requirement. The elders are portrayed as just barely animated characters. You'd possibly need a mirror to check if they were still breathing. Billy, sometimes people don't always say what they mean when they mean what they say. Click over this again, please. There are some well done process shots matting Billy into Elder's lair or Captain Marvel's flight scenes. Sticking Captain Marvel on top of a van and pointing the camera up also worked well enough because, you know, sometimes those simple tricks can work really well. Holy moly! But overall, Shazam is the cheesiest and corniest thing you might see out of a cheese and corn sandwich platter from Costco. Maybe school's not such a bad idea after all. You mean you're going back? Yeah, I think I'll give it a try. I think that's a wise decision, Don. Filmation had made its name as an animation studio, but began to branch out with some of its animated series also having live action sections. Shazam was their first almost fully live action production. The Shazam Isis Hour. For Shazam's second season, the show was paired with a new creation, Secrets of Isis, as part of the Shazam Isis Hour. A short title sequence introduced the hour before heading into an episode of Shazam. And then something seems to be up because early on in the new season, there is a total different looking Captain Marvel. Zac Efron lookalike Jackson Bostwick was fired and depending on who you ask it's because the actor did not show up for work because he was seeking treatment for an onset injury Shazam! or it was part of a pay dispute. Either way he was gone and John Davey was quickly drafted into a peer as Captain Marvel for the rest of the show's run. Is everything all right? I'm not sure mentor. I'm not sure at all. Davey is much more comfortable in the talking sections, but he does give off the impression of your dad wearing an ill-fitting Halloween costume. The Shazam Isis Hour intro was refilmed, though this two-shot does remind me of this scene from Anchorman. I couldn't have said it better. Yeah, that's true. The hurried recasting meant any existing effects footage with Captain Marvel would need to be reshot. And as such, the new flying shots were recorded in a television studio before being transferred to film. As the show wore on, the makers found they could make more use of Captain Marvel and better use of his powers. Now he's polishing the glass disc and grinding it to make it into a huge magnifying glass. There are actual special effects <gasps> and optical effects in some episodes. In later episodes, Captain Marvel would also appear more than once. There's also slightly more ambition in what they set out to do. I mean, it adds to the charm at how they almost got there in places. The videotape chroma key effect shots transferred back to film 
really does pull you out of things. Like how the lifeguard at the public pool pulled you out after the food poisoning kicked in. The wrong deed is usually only the beginning. You find yourself trying to cover it up and then the wrong deed has led to lies and then they get bigger and bigger. The economics of a Saturday morning show was that a first season would generally have a smaller episode run than a primetime show and then the show would be rerun for weeks on end. A really successful show would get additional episode orders but in small batches like six or seven shows. To the tunnel, it's our only chance. And then these episodes would be mixed in with repeats, so the kids would occasionally be surprised with a new episode they hadn't seen before. Look, I'm just stating a fact, man, that's all. Which of the two Captain Marvels is better? Hi. Each is better at a different thing. Jackson Bostwick certainly looks like Captain Marvel, but John Davey had a better handle on the dialogue side. Mentor, where's your sense of adventure? If you could have mixed the pair in some form of, I don't know, transporter accident, like Tuvok and Neelix, then you might have had the perfect 1970s Captain Marvel. But that's only if the executioner Janeway was nowhere to be seen. As the second and third seasons were paired with Filmation's own creation, Secrets of Isis, there were a few crossover episodes for both shows. Isis star Joanna Cameron would appear on some episodes Let me ride thy mighty wind. While Davy appeared in a few episodes of Isis. Even though Isis is just as cheesy as Shazam, I would love to see it, but apparently Filmation's archive of their original creations was not looked after as well as their licensed properties such as Shazam or Star Trek. Listen, before I go, Captain Marvel, may I have your autograph for my collection? Gladly, if you let me have yours. <laughs> <laughs> The history of Shazam starts in 1939 when the character of Captain Marvel was created by C.C. Beck and Bill Parker. First published in Wiz Comics in 1940 by Fawcett Comics, the character of Captain Marvel was very popular in its day and one of the first superheroes adapted into a live action serial. Over the following decades, Captain Marvel would attract court cases like a refrigerator attracts fridge magnets advertising refrigerator repair. He learned a valuable lesson that we can all share. Fawcett would get out of the comics business in the 50s, taking Captain Marvel with it, but that didn't stop other publishers trying every now and then to fill the gap with a very similar character, which of course fanned sales of Porsche 911s to copyright lawyers for decades. Well, who's gonna argue with Captain Marvel? In the late 60s, Marvel Comics somehow ended up with the trademark to the name Captain Marvel, but not the comic with all the shazamming. Shazam! In the early 70s, DC had gained the rights from Fawcett to use the Captain Marvel character with all of the Shazamming, and now the comic was titled Shazam. While the character would later be renamed as Shazam, he'd remain Captain Marvel in the comics for a time. And that's where we came in. I love the bit where you told the kid a winner is that by which a loser wins, but not merely from whence a loss turns to two wins. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> no idea, I read it in a fortune cookie. Shazam! The Show, apart from being one of the few classic filmation shows still available with a high quality master, is a relic. But one taken out of context is still tons of fun. If you were to take this at face value, it's not aged particularly well. But I had a good laugh going through this, and I'd love a chance to see some of the other Filmation live action series if they are ever remastered and re-released. Some of the prices I've seen for the out-of-print DVDs are eye-watering. Shazam is fun enough, colourful, silly at times, but also deathly earnest most of the time. There's this guy out there on a boat. I found the bits that I enjoyed the most were at the start of each episode, where Mentor and Billy were just shooting the shit. So instead he played in a squirt. That's S-K-I-R-T, it's pronounced skirt. Not if you're from Brooklyn. Well, you don't come from Brooklyn. And then those damn elders had to go and spoil it with their cryptic crap. You will know when the time comes to know because it's time. Well, I'm not sure I understand what you mean, Solomon. The ducks will be in a row before the alligator flies the coop. I'll do what I can. It shouldn't be too difficult. Shazam! is a show that has kids' television stamped all over it. It feels like Skippy the Bush Kangaroo and The Adventures of Superman had a drunken one-night stand, and Shazam! was the result. I think you put us over the border into Mexico. Mentor, you've got the map upside down. Its limitations in terms of its budget and its storytelling do seem like the show was made with everybody involved having their hands tied.
Shazam's soundtrack has a familiar filmation vibe, but that's likely because the credited composers were pseudonyms for prolific composer Ray Ellis and filmation producer Norm Prescott. I had seen a lot of filmation series when I was younger, though I don't actually remember much of Shazam. But one thing about their shows bugged me as a child, a thing that really had me on edge. And after years of psychoanalysis, I can fully realize that it was based on absolutely nothing. And that thing was this, the producer's revolving credit. I can't explain it, maybe I just thought it was pretentious. Or it's possible it reminded me of the time I got carsick when eating dinner in a revolving restaurant. I'm sure you'll understand when the time is right. Like many of their series, executive producers Lou Scheimer and Norm Prescott also provided voices. In this case, they are the immortal elders, and Scheimer is also the series narrator. Filmation would return to Shazam as an animated series, but the studio's rival Hanna-Barbera would briefly bring to life a live-action Shazam in the infamous late 70s TV specials Legends of the Superheroes. Pretty silly, isn't it? Then in 2019, Shazam made his big screen debut in the film entitled, funnily enough, Shazam. A colourful entry in the often dour DCEU that does feel like it was made by DC's biggest rival. See you next week. After the series, both Captain Marvels would appear in various things, usually small roles, but would forever be linked with this series. Likewise, TV's Michael Gray found himself typecast and would soon leave acting altogether. I'm TV's Michael Gray. Though he wouldn't be totally forgotten. TV's Michael Gray! Billy Batson from the Shazam Isis Hour? Shazam, made for a budget price and often written down to its audience, is generally fun. I couldn't have said it better. It's incredibly cheesy fun, like wrestling in a jacuzzi filled with room temperature cheese sauce. I think we understand a lot of things that we didn't before. We sure do. Good for you, fellas. You feel a lot better when you do. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, leave a comment below, or check out some of our other videos. See you next week.